Also, if the currents are strong, the operation will be, will be delayed. Delays that he cannot afford if they want to complete the project on time. At the rear of the ship, the marine engineers have been dropping a device known as a sonar fish into the water. The sonar fish works by emitting sound waves around it. The sound waves will bounce off nearby objects and reflect back onto the sonar. This allows it to compile data about the underwater landscape. On board the ship, the survey team is compiling the data. A survey must be done to ensure that the route where the submarine cables are to be laid will be on solid ground and will not be obstructed. However, the data gathered today brings bad news. Well, mm -hmm. but only we have a small problem here. Yeah. Can you see from here the, the, the rock area? Mm -hmm. Only we have a gap uh, around 100 meters. A large rock formation is obstructing their planned route for the cables. They must come up with a solution. After analyzing the data again, they decide to reroute the cables around the rock formation. Everything's going well. And then we have a, just a slightly problem. There's some certain portion. We have a rock area. But this problem is solved already. No, I may be because uh, we've done well. With the marine survey complete, another team on a cable ship will come out to sea to lay down the cables underwater. One end of the cables is pulled from the ship to the shore. Once secured on shore, the fiber cable is dropped to the seabed. The other end of the cable is loaded into a 30-ton sea plow. The plow is then lowered onto the seabed. The plow will then simultaneously lay and bury the cable along the planned route decided during the marine survey. This cable will eventually link up with stations that TM is setting up overseas. These stations will receive incoming broadband traffic and will boost outgoing broadband traffic. Once complete, these new upgrades will improve Malaysia's international connectivity with the rest of the world. Back in the heart of Kuala Lumpur, while most people are heading home from work, the day is just beginning for TM's civil works team. Working in the middle of downtown Kuala Lumpur poses unique challenges for Asmawati and her ground crew. First, you need to get permit. So for the, for the local authorities, they only allow us uh, to work in downtown KL from 10.30 p.m. to 4 a.m. That's the only window we have. With a small window of time to work, they cannot afford any delays. Their goal tonight is to pull cables through pre-existing underground ducts. To access these ducts, they need to go down manholes where unseen dangers lurk. These manholes are dangerous. Uh, the one that we are doing tonight is 14 feet in height. Before you enter the manhole, you need to detect are there any uh, toxic gas or not. When it reaches an acceptable level, then you need to go in. The team proceeds with caution. A gas reader is put in to detect the presence of hazardous gases. Their fears are realized. Unsafe levels of methane gas are detected. Organic decomposition in the ground creates toxic gases which seep into the manholes. In a confined space without proper ventilation, methane gas is extremely dangerous, for it is highly flammable. High levels of methane gas may also displace the oxygen in the manhole and could lead to suffocation and possibly death. Yes, yeah, toxic. Safety is of the highest priority to the team, and no risks are taken. A 
A blower is inserted into the manhole to blow out the methane gas. When the methane gas is blown into the atmosphere, it dissipates in strength and is no longer harmful. Finally, the methane gas level has been reduced. It is now safe to descend. Once at the bottom, a technician lays through fiber optic cables that will come out of the other end of the manhole, thus connecting the network. Asmawati is thankful that everything has gone according to plan tonight. We haven't derailed the schedule, so we are on track with this project so far. By the time the team wraps up, the city is already fast asleep. Besides Kuala Lumpur, another area that is a priority for the high-speed broadband rollout is Nusa Jaya, in Iskandar, Malaysia, located in southern Johor. It is being developed as a world-class metropolis of the future, equipped with first-class facilities. Iskandar, Malaysia, will come complete with high-speed broadband facilities for its smart homes and businesses. Having high-speed broadband infrastructure is a key factor in attracting foreign investors to Iskandar, Malaysia. Definitely, uh, as um, new um, investment coming in, uh, they will also be looking for this sort of uh, broadband, which we need to ensure that this uh, facility will be up and competitive and on par with most of the developed countries throughout the world. The rollout phase of the high-speed broadband project is going well. However, are there procedures in place to protect the new network in the event of a crisis? What would happen if a major catastrophe were to suddenly strike? So around 2.30 p.m. of the day, I received an SMS from uh, my team saying that we lost several bandwidth. When I say several, that is quite huge. Malaysia's rollout of the high-speed broadband project is in full swing. The goal? To provide next-generation high-speed broadband access for 1.3 million premises. The team has had to battle unpredictable weather the rumbling ocean currents, and hazardous gases. After months of progress, the rollout phase has now reached the residential areas. It's a crucial phase of the operation, as fiber from the main lines will finally be connected to fiber that will reach homes directly. It's a delicate procedure, as the team needs to join two fiber optic cables together. First, cables on both ends are stripped of its cladding. The team must move quickly, as the longer the bare fibers are exposed to the air, the higher chance that it will get contaminated with dust or dirt particles. Next up, the fusion splicer. This device enables them to have a microscopic view of the ends of both fibers once they are clamped inside. Once aligned, a short electrical discharge melts the ends of the fibers. The fibers are then pushed together and fused. The fiber cables can now be pulled directly into the premises. The connections to the premises are patched through TM's exchanges. These exchanges act as facilitators for broadband traffic to be connected from the core network and international gateways to the premises. Approximately 95 exchanges are equipped to handle the delivery of high-speed broadband service. Each exchange can provide nearly 25,000 premises with high-speed broadband connectivity. 
But will such an extensive network be able to handle unexpected disasters? TM's Internet Protocol Network Operations Center was built to handle such emergencies. It is home to TM's Crisis Management Task Force. Led by Badrul Hisham, they are the first to respond to any network crisis. On 11 March 2011, Badrul and his team faced one of their biggest challenges ever. Around 2.30 p.m. of the day, I received an SMS from uh, my team saying that we lost several bandwidth. When I say several, that is quite huge. Little did he know that he was about to face one of the most devastating natural disasters in Asia. A major earthquake had struck northeast Japan. The 9.0 magnitude earthquake triggered a ferocious tsunami that lashed across the Pacific Ocean at the speed of a jetliner. Several internet lines are getting congested and going offline. The crisis response team must act fast. I think we have quite a scenario here. The team quickly yeah. conducts a comprehensive analysis of the disaster. The tremendous force of the earthquake had caused an undersea cable off the coast of Japan to snap. This cable carried vital internet traffic from Malaysia to the rest of the world. With the line down, other lines carrying internet traffic have started to become congested. Badrul cannot afford for more lines to go offline. With no room for error, he decides to reroute the traffic to alternate submarine cable lines. TM's crisis response team rolls into action. Within minutes, his plan works, and they recover most of the lost internet traffic with minimal disruptions. I'm proud to say that the team uh, carry out their uh, plan accordingly and professionally. They are very uh, well prepared on this situation, and uh, everything was under control within uh, one hour after the event. TM's crisis response team had saved the day and is well prepared to handle such future crises. With the first phase of the ground rollout complete, Asmawati has one final crucial task to complete before the service is released to the public. The internet. Today, her team is at Cybergia and will put the entire system through a final stringent test. Okay. This will test whether the network end-to-end -end will is able to provide the services in, uh, in good condition. It will test the equipment together with the passive network that we have newly laid on the ground. Okay, uh, let's test another cable. The team is anxious. If there are any 